Turns out that the majority of UFO sightings occur along the 37th parallel of the United States. It also turns out that most cattle mutilations are along the 37th parallel. It also turns out that almost all of America's underground military bases are along the 37th parallel of the United States. The contiguous United States occupies the latitudes between 25 degrees north and 49 degrees north. The 37th parallel refers to the latitude line at 37 degrees north. Some interesting locations along the 37th parallel are Area 51, Aztec, New Mexico, the site of a 1948 UFO crash hoax, Mammoth Cave, and Hellier, Kentucky. Author Ben Mesrick tells us that the 37th parallel is a UFO superhighway, that it has a high frequency of cattle mutilations, and that it runs near several hidden underground military bases. Now let's see what kind of analysis we can do. Unfortunately, I could not find any data supporting the existence of hidden underground bases. And as far as cattle mutilations go, I am still looking for data that will tell me the locations of them. However, for UFO reports, there is lots of quality data available. Here's what you do. Go to www.kaggle.com in your browser Click the search area, then type in UFO, click UFO sightings, and you're going to want the scrubbed.csv or comma separated value file. That file contains 80,000 UFO reports with 11 columns of data, with the last two columns being the latitude and longitude coordinates of each sighting. So to analyze this data, you're going to either need a really large map and 80,000 push pins or some serious coding skills. Of course, that's what this video is all about. So after trimming the data a little bit more, here they are, the locations of 70,000 UFO reports within the lower 48. Now that we have the data in this form, it's a fairly simple matter to divide it up into bands centered around each parallel and then count the number of reports in each band. And boom, here it is, a bar chart showing the percent of UFO reports at each parallel. Two things I want to point out are that there's a lot of variability and that the 37th parallel does not stick out as a UFO hotspot. Other people have noticed this as well. Does it mean that there is no UFO superhighway there? Not necessarily because we have not yet taken into account population density. UFOs don't report themselves, so we would expect areas of low population to have low UFO reports. So to make the comparison, I produce a second chart in the same format that shows the population percentage at each parallel as well. And something that immediately jumps out is that they look very similar. Could it be that the UFO reports are almost totally determined by population density. To figure this out, let's change our format a little bit and overlap the charts. As you can see, the red UFO data does follow along with the blue population curve fairly well, but with some interesting deviations. At the 37th parallel, we find actually fewer reports than what we would expect. But at the 34th parallel, there are far more UFO reports than we would expect given the population there. But before we can make anything of these deviations, we have to answer an important question, which is, are these deviations actually significant? To explain significance, I'm going to use the example of a coin flip. If the coin is fair, we expect to get heads half the time. Now, in a run of a thousand flips, we won't get exactly half heads, but we do expect to be between two or three percentage points of 50%. On the other hand, if our trials are only five flips, then we could get a wild variation. Sometimes we get no heads or all heads. At any rate, we can't get exactly 50% because it's an odd number of flips. So the point is that the significance of the deviation depends on the sample size. In our case, the sample size is a little over 70,000. That's the number of UFO reports. And our situation is a little more complicated than just heads or tails in that there are 25 parallels, 
each having different probability. But in software, it's easy to simulate an experiment in which we sample this distribution 70,000 times. The result is the green curve. The green curve differs slightly from the blue population curve, and these differences give us a feeling for a typical deviation at this sample size. Now that's just one trial. Let's plot 100 trials and mark the maximums and the minimums at each parallel with error bars. Because 99 out of the 100 trials landed between the error bars, that tells us that there's about a 99% chance that our UFO data will also be between the error bars for a given parallel if it's well explained by population density. So here's our UFO data. Before we noted that UFO reports may be low for the 37th parallel. Now we can say that they are significantly lower because they fall below the error bars. And the reports are significantly higher than expected for the 34th parallel. In fact, the data for most parallels falls outside of the error bars. So we can say with high probability that the population density is not enough to explain our UFO report data. Going back to the map, I've now added all the busiest airports in the United States. To find out why the 34th parallel is so active, let's zoom in on that and see if anything sticks out. Well, the first thing we encounter on the West Coast is the Los Angeles International Airport. That is the second busiest airport in the country and third busiest in the world. We also pass near Hartsfield-Jackson Atlanta International Airport, which is in fact the busiest airport in the country and the busiest in the world. So that's a clue that we need to add air traffic density to our model. Finding air traffic density as a function of latitude turned out to be a more difficult problem than I was hoping. So instead I've used this list of 100 busiest airports in the United States. From this I made a data file containing the airport, its passenger volume, and to that I also added its latitude and longitude coordinates. Then it's easy to compute the fraction of total airport passenger volume for each parallel. Now that we have this data, the next step is to find a way to add it to our model. Recall that our initial hypothesis was that the fraction of total UFO reports at a certain latitude was equal to the fraction of population at that latitude. That was our model. We found through significance testing that our hypothesis was inadequate. So we're going to refine our hypothesis by including air traffic density. A detail we need to remember is that we're working in percentages. If I add 100% of the airport data to 100% of the population data, I'll get 200% of the UFO data. That's not right. So we need to proportion these terms so that they add up to the whole. To do this, we'll multiply the first term by a number between 0 and 1 to represent its contribution. We'll call that number C. The second term will multiply by 1 minus C, which is the remaining amount that it must contribute. To find C, we scan it between 0 and 1 and pick the value that results in the best fit to our data. That occurs where the error or the difference between our predicted UFO data and the actual data is at a minimum. In this case, that's 0.72. So there we have it, our final model for our refined hypothesis. Let's see how well this works. So here it is, our new fit using both population data and airport data. And I went ahead and added the error bars here. Comparing to our old model that used only population data, we can see that the new model fits a little bit better in the bulk of the UFO reports. In particular, the 34th parallel is no longer looking so abnormally high. And the 37th parallel is actually within the error bars now. Not everything's perfect though. We have a lot of underreporting in the southern latitudes and overreporting in the northern latitudes. In particular, the 48th parallel is extremely high compared to what our model predicts it should be. Could it be a UFO superhighway? Well, let's leave that to a future video. As far as the 37th parallel is concerned though, I think we're ready for some conclusions. First of all, population and air traffic data do seem to explain much of the UFO report distribution, although it's not perfect. And I think we can say that the 37th parallel, so far, does not appear to be unusual at all. Going forward, there's much we can do to improve this analysis. For one thing, the UFO reports occur over many decades, whereas the population density data that I used was from 2015. 
if there's been a big shift over that time, well, we need to account for that. Also, our model of air traffic density is extremely crude. We need actual data that includes government, commercial, and private aircraft. Given those two things, we can do a more sophisticated analysis, like locate UFO hotspots in both latitude and longitude. After all, if you're looking for UFOs, just knowing the parallel isn't very useful. So that's about all I have to say for now, except that I really enjoyed investigating this fringe topic. I learned a lot about making videos, and I hope I've given you a sense of the scientific process, namely collecting data, forming a hypothesis, testing that hypothesis, and then refining it. So with that, I say goodbye from the first, and possibly last, Stat Strange production. <laughs>